What does this mean? Indoor capacity max 15% with time restrictions. What? Indoor what? Rides? Dining? Time restrictions on what? Context means everything here. Disneyland's gonna open on April 30th, but how it will reopen is still a bit of a mystery. Those were the guidelines provided with the initial announcement that uh, theme parks could open starting April 1st. The original guidelines were skimpy at best. The only thing that was really clear <laughs> was that uh, were the capacity limits and that you couldn't dine indoors in the red tier. The rest was unclear, confusing even. There wasn't even a specific mention of rides, of attractions, which is, as far as I could tell, the main reason why most people go to a theme park. But now we've got some answers and we're going to give them to you. Next on Fresh Baked. Oh, and I've got something on the whole California resident thing. Next on Fresh Baked. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fresh Baked. It's a new day, and we've got more info on what's gonna happen when the parks reopen on April 30th. It's a mix of good news and bad news. Uh, we've got updates on the following. Indoor dining, indoor attractions, uh, what can open, and where guests can queue for the attractions that are open. Park capacities and ticket sales, including some important updates, like I mentioned, on the California resident issue, as well as some odds and ends on arrival and entry. And we'll start with indoor dining, because that's the easy one. <laughs> we already knew that you couldn't dine indoors in the red tier. They made that part clear, but we did get some resolution on uh, orange tier stuff. In the orange tier, indoor dining can open up at 25%, and then at 50% on the yellow tier, which is pretty great. As for attractions, that thing that we were talking about at the beginning of this video does appear to have been meant or intended for, for attractions, there, there will be a time limit on attractions, and that time limit is 15 minutes, which obviously shouldn't be a problem for just about every single ride at Disneyland, except for Pirates of the Caribbean and Rise of the Resistance. A little iffy on those. I guess it depends on when you start the clock. This ride that I did on Pirates, which is a complete uh, filming of the whole ride, clocked in at just, uh, just over 15 minutes, but it did include a couple of stops for traffic. Boats were bunched up and they were not they were just sitting there. Uh, and I expect that uh, that would account for, we should be able to get in under 15 minutes. If that thing clocked in at 15 and a half, we should be able to get in under 15 if there's you know capacity limits. If they're not running as many boats, if there's no traffic, if there's no backup, uh, they should be able to get, the, you know, the, the boat should be able to flow a little more freely in Pirates. So I feel pretty good that we could get uh, under 15 minutes and, and really is there going to be a guy down there? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Are they going to have a guy like you came in at 15 minutes and 45 seconds We're shutting you down. I kind of don't think that's going to happen. So I think pirates is fine Rise though is a bit trickier because again the clock issue uh, The actual ride if you start the clock when you get in your actual ride vehicle, it's only like six minutes I think you spend six minutes in space uh, but if they start the clock when you get on the shuttle that's another story. You got five minutes in the shuttle, and then who knows how much time you spend in the hangar. Obviously, they're gonna breeze you through the hangar, and then they gotta kind of put you into groups. Then you gotta do the Kylo Ren thing. Maybe they skip that part, I don't know. But I can imagine a scenario where once you get into the uh, shuttle to you know, landing back on Galaxy's Edge in Batu, that it's, that it's more than 15 minutes. I can, I can see that happening. I think I read on the internet somewhere that if you were to clock the whole thing, it was about 18 minutes, but queuing, is fluid here. And that's the iffy part because, you know, once you get on the shuttle, you are indoors for the duration until you land back on Batu. Even if you're not in a ride vehicle, you're, you know, you're going in the shuttle and then you're in the hangar and then you're in the queue and then you're talking to Kylo and then you get in their vehicle. So I have a feeling though, that this has already been resolved by Disney uh, the way, because they, they made a specific reference to it in the opening announcement. They said Rise is gonna be open. And there, I, I find it very hard to believe that they would have not cleared that or checked with the state or had some sort of you know conversation about that to confirm which rides could be open and which rides couldn't, and they got the okay to go from the state on rides and resistance. So that 15 minutes thing, uh, I, I'm not worried about it. I think every ride, every ride is going to be open except for Finding Nemo. Don't ever expect to see Finding Nemo again. I don't know that. <laughs> on gospel or anything like that. That's just my, you know, that's my logic brain, my opinion talking. I just don't see a scenario where Finding Nemo comes back. We've talked about that before and I wanna get into that now. Let's get into our next topic. And that is the queue. Uh, they made specific mention in the new guidelines that all queuing has to occur 
outdoors. There's no indoor queuing. Now, that doesn't mean to say that you can't go through the indoor queue because, I mean, obviously you can't ride Rise of Resistance without going through the indoor queue. Uh, so there's going to be no stopping inside the queue. So that means all your queuing has to, all the waiting, all the standing by and doing nothing has to happen outdoors. Now, this isn't a, a big surprise though. I expected this. It's actually something that Disney is already pretty good at. Uh, they don't do it to 100% accuracy, but they're already practiced at it. So rides like Space Mountain and Indiana Jones do a large part of their waiting outside. Uh, there's very little waiting on Indiana Jones. They, they, they remedied that a long time ago. So you walk through most of that queue. They, same thing for Space Mountain. They changed that recently. I would say like an, a year or two before the closure, uh, maybe a little bit longer. They, 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 they set everybody up outside. Uh, they built that whole exterior queue and everything. Uh, and then once you get inside the building, it's just a quick walk down, down the ramp. Uh, so I, I, I would have a feeling that most queues are going to be good. I also have a feeling, and this hasn't been confirmed by Disney or anything like that, but I also do have a feeling we may be seeing more use of the virtual queue system. Not exactly Rise of the Resistance boarding groups type situation, but just a virtual queue. You've seen a sneak peek of this already if you've been to downtown Disney. Uh, they, they're testing a system. Well, I don't know if it's a test, but they're using a system at downtown Disney that is pretty much exactly what I would expect them to use uh, at Disney, if they were to go that route. You go up to, uh, they have a sign posted out in front of downtown Disney, or they would have a sign posted in front of a ride. There's a QR code, you scan the QR code, uh, put in your, you probably have to scan your ticket at the same time to sort of, you know, connect the two, and then it puts you in the queue. And then you get a, you get a text message, a push notification when it's your turn, and you come on back and you get in line. And that's it. And I have a feeling they can, they can resolve a lot of this, uh, a lot of the issues with, you know, queuing up indoors with, with that virtual queue. It's just a question of which rides do they include, if, if any or all, who knows? All right, next topic. Let's talk about ticket sales and that thing that so many people want to know about. California residents only, is that a thing? Again, yes, unfortunately, it is a thing. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit more solid, more certain now than it was before, at least in my opinion. Uh, they're definitely requiring, this is a requirement that, that theme parks uh, vet that you're a California resident when you buy your ticket. Uh, and all this will be made clear when you buy your ticket in the reservation system. It's gonna be well uh, noted, well branded on the ordering system. There'll probably be banners and pop-ups and that kind of thing. Uh, when you buy your ticket, they're even going to ask you to certify, to confirm that everybody in your party that you've just bought tickets for is a California resident. Now, that means that for one, which is good, that you'll be able to buy more than one ticket when you make your reservation. You don't have to go back in and keep buying more tickets. You can buy three or four or five. Uh, so you can buy multiple tickets in one purchase, it sounds like. You just have to confirm, as I mentioned, that everybody's a California resident. But in doing that, and it also suggests that they're not going to ask you to uh, provide proof at that point, at the time of purchase. They're gonna go ahead and sell that ticket to you in good faith provided that you check the box that certifies that everybody in your party is a California resident. Now, that means, in my opinion, well, actually I should say, I have it on pretty good authority that they will be checking your ID at the gate, at the gate. So uh, while they're kind of being a little fast and loose at the ordering process, they're not gonna be fast and loose at the gate. They're going to check your ticket against your driver's license. So just an early warning. Uh, I know we talked about this in a previous video about you know, people being creative and trying to gain the system. I would suggest not trying to gain the system, if only because the last thing you want is to get all the way to the gate and hear that boing sound and then, or whatever it is that they're doing and they, they, them sending you back. That's gotta be the worst thing in the world is to be turned away at the gate. Don't let that be you. Uh, so if you're, gonna, if you're gonna buy those tickets, make sure that you can verify that everybody in your party is a California resident. And by the way, I, I wanna say, I don't say this because I believe in that. I'm just saying that because I'm looking out for you guys and I don't want anybody to get turned away, that's all. Oh, and also another, by the way, before you ask, I don't know why. <laughs> you could buy, as state guests could buy a ticket for Touch of Disney, but they can't for Disneyland. It's a fair question. Uh, one side note on capacity, this was something that people had asked previously uh, and I got a little more uh, confirmation on that. Disney cast members are going to be required to be tested once a week, every week. Uh, and provided that they're doing that, provided Disney is testing everybody on a regular basis 
then they're not gonna count those cast members against capacity. At least that's the way they phrased it in the guidelines. So I don't know, again, if this is something that they're gonna, there's gonna be a lot of oversight, uh, but if you were concerned, if you were concerned that cast members would count against capacity, that is not the case, because there are. <laughs> there are a lot of cast members there, uh, and I mean, they, they represent a fair percentage of the people that are on Disney property. But cast members will be tested weekly. And then finally, we got a few more odds and ends for you. Some things that I thought were interesting when I was reading the guidelines. One is that the parking will be socially distanced. And this is something that I noticed at Touch of Disney. And I thought maybe Disney was just being creative or going the extra mile. But uh, if you park at Touch of Disney, you'll notice that they every other row was being parked at. They were not parking in every single row, which is the first time I've seen anybody do that. Be that Disney uh, at, at, at Simba or at Universal or at Knott's. Nobody's doing that yet. And I, I kind of wondered why, actually, uh, as I pulled up <laughs> as I pulled up at Touch of Disney. But that will be a requirement uh, going forward when the parks reopen. Okay, now this is something interesting. The guidelines suggested that theme parks consider, not required, but consider staggering arrival times. And I get why this is a good idea, because you don't want everybody... Disney fans are a vigorous bunch. <laughs> and there's gonna be certainly gonna be some crowds. You look at the crowds we saw at Touch of Disney when it first opened, the, the lines were out the door at the parking structure. But you get, you get there 30 minutes later and it was wide open. So you don't, you're, you're trying to limit bunches. You're trying to limit people just gathering in a, in a, in a bunch. And the way you, one of the ways you can do that is by staggering arrival times. So the only problem with that is I don't see how anybody would be okay with paying a full fee, an all day fee for a ticket without at least giving the opportunity to go for rope drop at 8 a.m. Uh, I know obviously not everybody's gonna do the whole bell to bell thing and, and they're still gonna pay the full fee, but you can't make them not. You, don't, you have to give them that opportunity. So I'm not sure how Disney's gonna do that unless, if they chose to, unless they offered a, a discounted ticket, which is something that we talked about in a previous video, which I suggest you uh, take a look at. It's pretty interesting. Um, it, I think they called it uh, day parting. Disney was messing around with the idea of selling not just the staggered time, but just chunks of a day. You can go from this time to that time, and then you know, like, like a morning ticket and an evening ticket, that kind of thing. And it's an interesting way to try to create more capacity that didn't exist before. Walk up tickets. They want to allow you to buy tickets, to walk up to the gate and buy a ticket. Disney's not going to do that. There's no chance. Disney can't do that because there's too much demand. Uh, they have to limit capacity. And the only way to do that is to you know, make a reservation system, which, by the way, the guidelines are suggesting you have a reservation system anyway. But you can still sell tickets also on the side at the gate, which, again, that does not apply to Disney's case, but it's good news for parks like Knott's and Universal and uh, uh, Magic Mountain, especially Magic Mountain. They're going to open in like three days. Magic Mountain's going to open in just a couple days. <laughs> oh, I'm suddenly wishing, I'm suddenly having FOMO in my brain that I wish I'm going to Magic Mountain. I don't even like Magic Mountain because I'm not a roller coaster guy. But that's going to be a scene. Magic Mountain is going to be a scene uh, on April 1st because I think they are opening right on April 1st. Anyway, good news for them. Uh, and then finally, they have stated that uh, performers, people who are performing in the park, can do so without wearing a mask as long as their performers are six feet apart. This was a big deal in Walt Disney World because there's lots of live shows at Disney World. Not so many at, D or at Disneyland. D Disney World, big deal. Anyway, uh, you can perform without a mask as long as you're six feet apart. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to imagine the Dapper Dan's doing their thing on Main Street six feet apart, and I just don't even, <laughs> that just kind of does not sit well with me. Uh, so I would rather them just not appear. Uh, or, but they did say, actually, I should, I should uh, preface that by saying they did say that uh, performers could be closer than six feet if they were uh, tested twice a week, not just once a week, but twice a week. So if the Dapper Dans are getting tested a bunch, we might still see them, which is, now that would be good news. I would like to see that. And I think that's it as far as guidelines go. Uh, for those wondering, uh, Orange County currently is still in the red tier. As of the recording of this video, we are technically in the red tier, though our st statistically speaking, we qualify for the orange tier, but you gotta, you gotta season those numbers for, I think, two weeks. Uh, but my understanding is that uh, as early as Tuesday, this Tuesday, Orange County could be officially in the orange tier, and that means 
25% capacity at Disneyland. It means uh, indoor dining at 25% where there wasn't any currently. Uh, and uh, now I don't expect though, by the way, I'm, I'm, I've heard, unconfirmed, but I've heard that Disney may still keep things at 15%, even if they are in the orange tier, uh, which makes sense because um, you want to kind of keep the pressure off. You don't want to, you don't, well, 25% isn't a lot of pressure. <laughs> they could do 25% standing on their head, I think. But I digress. They may want to let the, let the thing kind of, you know, they just want to let it try it out at 15%, see what's working, what isn't. Uh, though I suspect they've got months and months of testing already at Walt Disney World. And I don't expect things to be that much different here at Disneyland. So it, I probably won't be long. If we do stay at 15%, it probably won't be for long. Uh, as long as we stay in the orange tier, which by the way, uh, our numbers, again, if you're wondering, uh, our numbers are as low as they've been since I think last May. I mean, it is just, it is just cratered, just dropped off the face of the earth, those numbers. They're as low as they were in May, back when they said, yes, we're doing great, let's open the parks, and then everything went hell. Uh, so that's good. I mean, things are getting better. The, the, the vaccine appears to be doing its job. By all, by all appearances, so that's good. And I think that you know, it won't be long before we're at that 25% uh, capacity and then hopefully into the yellow tier. Yellow tier seems very achievable now, where I didn't think it was possible at all, uh, not very long ago. Uh, but so there you go, that's it guys. Uh, that's everything for this update. Uh, thanks for watching. I wanna hear your thoughts, you guys, on the comments below, of course. Uh, let us know, tell me that you're excited about going back to Disneyland without saying you're excited about going back to Disneyland. Uh, and until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please be safe out there. Be kind to one another. We love you guys. And fresh baked.